Hello, I'm George Hayes and welcome to the second tutorial in this series. In this tutorial we are going to be covering indexed buffered objects and we're going to be changing the code of our previous system or you can actually download the current version of what we're doing from my website and you can pause this video and do that instead but I'm going to show you real quickly what changes we're going to make and then um, we'll go on from that point so this is what we had as far as at the end of the last tutorial and with all the primary uh, functions as far as for the program and then we had the object that was actually 3D here in these last three files. These files you can get and get rid of. I'm not going to do it on this because I'm keeping it for the tutorial. And then you're also going to need to get rid of a few things on here. Now to get rid of these files you can just left click on it and then sit there and tell it to uh, remove from project. And then you can delete it from your directory if you want. Okay, also in SDLOGH, you're going to want to get rid of this line here. Alright, um, on init, you're going to get rid of the two lines here referring to the object. On render, you're going to get rid of the object display line. And then on cleanup, you're going to get rid of the object cleanup up here. Alright, so once you get rid of those three files and those lines and those files, then that's going to bring you back over to what you're basically starting out with as far as in the current one. Alright, and the current project will actually, if you download it from the site, will have mesh.h with mesh.cpp, shader.h, and shader.cpp added in and the reason we're doing this is the code's more manageable um, and it's going to be easier to expand and so forth as we go along on it all right. All right. but the, before we get started on that if you notice here on mesh.h we are using the glm math library and so you're going to need to download and install that Let's see. And you can get that from here. Go to opengl.org to the SDK libraries. And it has a link to the GLM website, which is glm at glm truck.net, which you can click download link, which will actually download it from the OpenGL math library at sourceforge.net. All right. So, we can get us back over to where. There we go. Alright, back to our program. And the first thing we're going to start working on is the mesh as far as building and storing it. You're going to need to include IO stream, vectors, string the GLM math library as we have here uh, common load text file which is still be included from your previous project it's here all right and glue.h first thing we do is we're going to have an enumeration in here buffers positions and this is simply so we can keep track of which buffer is which because in this one we're going to be moving away from just a state non-indexed buffer object to an indexed buffered object and then later on it'll make it easier to add in text coordinates uh, normals stuff like that and we can actually put more as far as in there and just keep track of them simply okay and this here num buffers will tell us how many we have as far as in it so all right now as far as our mesh class it's fairly simple we have of course this load area here but as far as data is the more important stuff we're going to look at right now we have a glu int which is an unsigned integer for a vertex array object then we have the, uh, an array for the buffers to go in yeah in this case we're going to have two buffers we're going to have the 
first one being the actual vertices, the second one being the index. All right, number of indices. All right, and then as far as uh, we're gonna for storing the data that we load up, we actually have m vertices and the index array here as well. So we have a vertex array and an index of array. All right. This one is created using the GLM vector three, and this one is going to be just using unsigned integer. Excuse me, it seems to have gotten the hiccups. And we'll load it in through this function. And yes, this will all change by the time we get further down in the series. Just right now is just a very quick way for us to load in a small amount of data, not something large. All right. So. You have as far as the this here is actually pushing back these vertices that we have listed here that are dumped into a vector three and it's pushed back and it's what that means is it's putting it onto the end of the vector of m vertices and we're doing the same with the index here all right so it only runs through it you know three times if in this case because we're going to have as far as when we load it we're going to load it from over here on the initialization portion of it which is going to be its GL float array a here and as you can see it's just very simple and then we have an index array here that's going to get loaded into it through this right here okay and then we we'll initialize the mesh which I'll show you in a second and on this page we're going to need the mesh triangle here because that's what we're going to build right on the init page here initialization page okay alright so back to mesh All right, pretty much covered that page there we're going to drop over here for initialization alright for any time you create an object like this, you're going to need at least one uh, general vertex array object, which you're going to create using this here. It says it creates a name. What it's doing is really creating an unsigned integer value pointing to most likely a memory location as far as for the process, uh, the video card to keep track of. Um, that's my best understanding of it. Now, then this here actually binds it as far as that saying we're going to be doing the work on it at this point here when you un put a zero on in it unbinds it says we're no longer doing work to that specific object all right and so you could initialize another object after this and go and do work and hit zero again go on to the next one all right so then we're going to sit there and generate our buffers after that point the number of buffers which we got from here in this case because we have two all right if we had these in this would change automatically to four all right and so it's going to load that into this array which we had that declared on another page all right so then we're going to bind each of these buffers and in this case we're binding the first one the array buffer uh, as, a, as an array buffer and we're loading in the m vertices per a um, sorry sorry about that I had to grab a drink uh, throat's parched anyway what that but there this line here is doing is actually showing the buffer as far as what it's assigning the buffer to type which I have it written out here on it just so oh, you know oh, in this first one anyway then go ahead as far as along here we're going to actually assign the data into it then we're going to enable it and then we're going to actually sit there and tell it how to look at that data alright so you know, it's going to say there's actually three of them in there three um, vertices sorry three different floating points that are in there and there's no gaps in between them all right 
that's all that's really pointing out as far as onto there you can go as far as onto the web and actually type this in and actually see what it says and does better all right but that's really what it's doing is just telling it is that there's going is three floating points and wrote in this case there's no gaps in it and I just that would probably be from where you can combine different buffers into a single array or use it for other stuff anyway uh, the difference between creating a buffer like this and your UV buffer or texture coordinates and normals and stuff is they are going to all use GL array buffer and when you create an index you're going to use element array buffer like in here alright now we're telling it that this uh, particular one is going to be the index alright and which one it is alright so then we're going to sit there and actually assign the indices into it and then we go as far as telling it we're done with the object up here that we created. All right, for drawing it, all right, we're gonna go through and again bind, right? Which is because we're telling it we're using this object now and we're so, so forth with it. All right, in the previous version we used this. You could still use this right now, which is just gonna go through and go through the three different indices and run like that in fact uh, I'll go ahead and show you Turn this one out take a second alright so run it still get a triangle alright and rebuild run again and you still get your triangle alright so the difference is we're using indices as far as in this one. Let's see if I can show you the big difference what that does for us. All right. In the first one, first way we're doing it, it will just go and we have nine values as far as in right now, or nine, three different indices. All right, zero, one, two, three, as far as for that, just that one triangle. All right, but if we have an object like this or something larger, all right. When it's not indexed, it has to have for every one of these positions for each triangle that's using a position a separate vertex as far as in here. So in this case, you would end up with nine vertices as far as for this one object. Now, when you index, you only need five. All right. So you only need five because you just store one for each of it and then you would sit there and go through and do like this for just standard. But if you go and do it as a triangle fan, you could do it with the simplest doing zero, one, two, three, four, because then it would go through, create the first triangle, recognize the third point here is for the next triangle, the fourth is for the fourth triangle. So uh, for what will come out most of your time, you'll be seeing stuff like this. All right, and you can imagine how that adds up when you go to larger and larger objects because if you looked at something like this you'd have instead of uh, one for each of these points around here that you see as a vertice you'd end up having one here three here three here three here three here three here two here one three 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 two all right so you'd end up 36 instead of 14 all right so back to our program and that's the difference as far as on that then as far as for cleanup we have GL delete buffers as far as on here and then delete the actual or object the vertex array object okay and that's very simple as far as for dealing with that and it looks like we're at 14 minutes so I'm gonna go ahead and go on maybe we can finish this up shaders all right, we're going to go ahead and create this class here. That's down to this. It's fairly simple again. All right, the IO streams needed standard IO.h um, string vector glue and any common load text file, which is for straight out loading text file. 
I'm not sure if I need that or not. I'll have to check it again later. If you don't, just remove it. Uh, maybe left over from old code. Sorry about that. All right, so we have a very basic initialization shader. You know, so that it, you know, if you don't put anything in, it doesn't cause any issues. And then if you put a string name in for it, it'll go through as far as down to load, and it would load it automatically. Or you can create the shader by this, and then it'll load it in this way. And have a GLN for the create shader file name and integer type uh, unsigned integer and load shaders this way. All right, the program ID is kept and then two names of the shader. All right, in this case, um, one for your vertex and one for your fragment shader. You could have uh, a compute shader, you could have a geometry shader, and other stuff. And let's go ahead and jump over into. Let's see if I can find it. Or, there it is. Alright. Uh, OpenGL has quite a bit of information and reference cards as far as for their shaders. As far as on the documentation stuff, you can go through and find that on their site. Um, it is important to keep up with these code versions if you're using OpenGL hardware versus what you can do as far as with your shaders. Um, and these numbers are important for putting inside your shaders also because if you're going to use something that's like shader uh, 120, you know, it's relevant to uh, OpenGL 2.1. So OpenGL 4.3 could use it, but you know you're not going to be using something greater than the OpenGL version. You are using is your major version, minor version, and that's also again mentioned back in here when we initialize our program. We have a major version, minor version, as far as with OpenGL, as far as on that. All right. And since if you don't know about all this stuff here, you're going to have to go back and watch the previous video. It covers the setup and all the stuff as far as regarding these six files or seven files on it. All right, going over to shader now. Now, initialization as far as it, what it does is simply passes, the, takes the file name, adds two endings on it, vertex shader, fragment shader, and dumps it down to the load shaders down here okay this load also does the same thing dumps it down here as far as on that um, bind which we'll see later on um, just binds tells it which program it's going to be using so once you've created your shader you'll have a program ID and you'll be able to pick and choose different ones if you have multiple and just select them by putting in their program ID. And so in this case, we'll actually be, because we'll have a class, you'll just select class and it'll be class.bind and you'll select that particular one. All right. So it loads into two file names. And then we go down as far as we create a program. Now, the order of this is absolutely important as far as in the way we're doing this with the shader. You, getting it out of order it won't, won't work simple as that alright so then we're going to bind the attributes now what we're doing as far as attributes is like your vertex array alright called position we're binding that as far as into position and so it's going to be z going by this zero this vertex position here vertex array that we had as far as in the mesh as you notice is zero alright then index buffers one and so on all right is getting labeled positions and that's going to give it the name that it's going to be addressed by as far as inside the shader and if I can jump over to our shaders here we go our vertex shader if you look here attribute attribute vertex position all right is sitting in here all right and that's how that's going to get addressed as far as on it all right. 
and then we come down we're going to pass it to GL positions and the vertex shader this GL positions is absolutely needed but we're going to go back right now and address the actual program that we're working with and then we'll come back and look at the shaders a little more all right then we're going to come down and actually create our shaders and what I've done is because we have to do the same thing for each type of shader we're just going to go th I created a separate function that goes through and does it so that it's we don't have to rebuild the same amount of code over and over and over again all right what it does is it passes into type such as in this case we're passing in that it's a vertex shader and down here we're passing in its fragment shader all right Now, these two variables here are just for checking errors. All right, and they're used down below. Uh, we're going to actually create the shader and by the type here with this unsigned integer. This is just going to be where we're storing the code. In fact, we load it with the next line, which is my text file that you see over here. All right, and then we create a pointer as far as to the actual code that's in this and the length of it we assigned we could just pass it into here and put in a, a reference to C code dot and then put uh, brackets on the end of it anyway this just keeps it simpler for now all right it adds two little lines don't really care <laughs> anyway this point here is where we're actually loading the code as far as into the shader and this here is where we compile it now the next two lines here this here actually checks if there's an error and result you could actually put see if uh, result gets an actual thing here and then go through and do the rest of this all right but if you're also going to get a zero if there's no result in this I just went ahead and used a zero and it goes through and uses it if it's greater than zero well then we're going to actually request the information as far as on the length of it and then we're going to pull the message out by its length all right and print it here so that's as simple as that gets then when you're cleaning up the shader you're going to detach the shader first delete the shader and then delete the program all right and that's all fairly simple as far as on that part but we're not done okay so anyway we finished with these two lines so jump that jump down to the create shader part after that we're going to attach these shaders literally to the program that we created up here so we attach them then we link them just like when you get done compiling something you link your different libraries together or objects together and you create your program at that point um, let's see we're going to check for length status and make sure everything came out right and print out any errors if necessary okay after you've linked your stuff if you're going to add uniforms in before you go and watch the next video then the, or whenever yeah it's going to be after this point here because you can't add uniforms in up here or, or anything until it's actually linked into the program you can probably do it before you do the testing to see if it actually linked properly but if you do it, the only thing is you may have had an error and then it's just not going to work anyway so all right but uh, if you add it in before you actually do the linking it won't work so you have to do it down below it it has to actually know where in the program to find the uniforms and that could be something like your uh, matrix for light uh, it could be matrix for position movement anything you know so after that we're just going to delete the shaders as far as we load it in all right and return and this return fail is just what we're I uh, was going to be putting in some additional error checking at the, and it just hasn't been done yet so it might be something I do later on down the road or you could do 
currently. So that brings you up to the current area as far as what we're on that now. Let's see if we can get over to here. All right, as far as what's there, the BS shader, as far as on this, just stands for basic shader, uh, version 330. There, now this GL position, you can't, can't use an out to replace this this is absolutely mandatory and here if you don't have it this uh, shader won't actually be doing anything so what we're doing is we're taking position which is your vertice that's coming in and we're converting it to vector 4 and then passing it out very simple shader um, on this shader here we have an out vec for color you can do that with color you can't you could use uh, the gel frag color for it or something to that effect, but right the out color is what we're going to be using in this. Uh, still using just a simple VEC 3 passing 100 out, which is the color for red. And you could change it to uh, blue is RGB, so you can make green or blue anyway. That's all this shader here is doing at this time. And the version 3.30 means that it's also compatible with OpenGL 3.3 and above. And you won't work with the stuff down below it. So you wouldn't be able to use this with OpenGL 2.1 or something like that. All right. Now, that's it for this episode, I guess episode or whatever, uh, tutorial this current tutorial and hope you like it and we'll go on and do quite a bit more here as we go down through this but having it at least set like this will make it easier for us to add on to it I do need to show you a few things as far as with initializing the mesh and stuff to that point alright as far as initializing our mesh we're going to create the mesh here alright as far as in the SDL OGL.H then we're actually going to initialize the mesh and shaders here. All right. And we also initialized our shader. Sorry, created our shader here and it created our mesh here. And we're initializing them here. All right. We're actually loading the data and then init mesh as far as down below it. And yes, it's two parts. I could have called it the init mesh from inside this, but I did it as a separate thing. All right. Now, as far as on render. We bind the shader and then we do a triangle draw and that is all it is and as you can see this is set up like this and feel free to play around with it use it as you want anyway uh, you'll be able to get the link to download it if you haven't already done so down below and hope you have fun thank you